If you wanted to train street lifting, but don't like going to a public gym and have a budget, then this video is for you. I'm gonna give you all the basic gym equipment you need to not only train street lifting, but also become advanced enough to win competitions. But before I tell you what to buy, let me first tell you what not to buy. The first item I don't recommend is the power tower. Now you might be thinking, Eugene, wait, the power tower features two of the most common street lifting movements to pull up and dip. Why would you not recommend it? First of all, I think power towers are terribly built. In fact, there's not a single power tower model in existence today that I would use for street lifting purposes, even for dips. Most, if not all power towers lack a basic pull-up bar without foam padding, bent handles, or full accessibility to any grip width. Some power towers don't have adequate height off the ground to fully extend your legs for pull-ups, not to mention the built-in knee raise station that comes with it. I still to this day can't figure out why if someone is able to perform dips and pull-ups that he would be choosing to do back supported knee raises as a core exercise as opposed to hanging knee raises off the pull-up bar or dip bars. All the knee raise station does is block the person's legs from doing a bit of hip flexion pull-ups and prevents the person from doing muscle-ups too. Also another thing with power towers is the weight capacity. Weight capacities of most power towers are 300 pounds or less which is a joke for what it could be doing in my opinion. I'm no manufacturer but I'm sure there's a way to increase the weight capacity by at least 200 pounds with a few extra support beams. So I think in general, there's a lot more feasible and sustainable options than the power tower. I think the power tower industry is sorely lacking and a lot of manufacturers don't train calisthenics enough to understand why power towers are deeply flawed. The other item I don't recommend is a plyo box. I think there's plenty of alternatives to a plyo box, like a chair. You don't need an optimal entrance for street lifting either if you're on a frugal budget. Also, this budget doesn't include weight plates because weight plates are more than $500 by themselves, which means that this budget favors athletes who train endurance and max reps, which is already a great base builder for your strength training. And since the weights being lifted aren't that heavy, you're not going to need to enter the dip or pull up with the most optimal setup. So in my opinion, I think plyo boxes are too expensive for the minimal utility you get out of it as a quote unquote frugal street lifter. I also don't recommend a dip attachment. Dip attachments are terrible because most of them are built in a way that your head makes contact with the rack itself. They also require the right power rack to go with the attachment, which will double your budget. And even with the right power rack, there are instances where the dip attachment is quite unstable, which can throw off your dip sets. So unless you have a premier power rack with the correct dip attachment already, I think there's a lot smarter ways to spend your money. The first piece for your home gym I recommend is a wall mounted pull-up bar. As for the specific pull-up bar, I found one on Amazon for $52 by Rage Fitness. You don't need this specific one, but the price did seem pretty good for the specs it gives. Most wall-mounted pull-up bars can do the job pretty well anyways, as long as the structure is tightly secured to the wall and it's not too far away from the wall. At $52, this bar has a weight capacity of 500 pounds, which is more than enough for the weights you'll be lifting on it. It also has 36 inches of wall clearance, which is plenty of room for performing muscle-ups with your back facing the wall. If wall-mounted bars are not an option, you may be able to get away with door frame pull-up bars. I have seen one guy perform chin-ups on this bar with 60 kilos attached and a body weight of about 50. So it could work, but I personally don't think the risk of damaging the door frame is worth it. Also, most door frame pull-up bars have very similar downsides to power tower pull-up bars in that they have foam padding, no accessibility to the entire grip width, and they have to bend their legs. Even though door frame pull-up bars cost as low as $20, the damage to repair the door frame on top of all the additional downsides I just mentioned isn't worth it in my opinion. The next item I recommend is the Xmark dip station. I personally think this is the best budget dip station you can get. At just $127, you get a V-shaped dip station with a 500 pound weight capacity and a height of 53 inches off the ground, 
which is plenty of space to extend your legs. The bars are also sturdy enough to perform heavy dips without much shaking, and it even has a crossbar which you can use to enter the dip. Additionally, because we're not using such heavy weight in this budget setup, most of the ideal features of a dip setup don't really apply to a budget street lifting home gym, which means you can get away with lower quality but cheaper dip options if you really wanted to. I wouldn't recommend getting those flimsy dip bars that people use to also perform front levers on, however. I think those have such little weight capacity and they shake way too much to even be feasible. Plus they're way too close to the ground that you have to bend your legs. I myself have been using the Xmark dip station for a couple of years and it's so far held very well. And I think this particular dip station is honestly one of the best dip stations manufactured here in America, despite its price. Of course, if there was more room in my budget, I'd definitely go for the home gym builders dip attachment, but right now it's way too expensive for my taste. If there's one thing in the home gym you don't want to compromise the quality for price, it's your dip belts. The dip belt is the single piece of equipment that makes street lifting what it is, which is why I recommend the Rogue Fitness dip belt. This dip belt has served me for years without any degradation in functionality. It's a triple stitched nylon dip belt with a weight capacity of over 25,000 pounds. And for these features alone, $62 is a steal because I personally think the high durability will last you for life. Most other dip belts that are less than $40 in my experience have a severe decrease in quality to the point where you're practically wasting your money even though it's very cheap. And especially if you want it to become strong in street lifting, you don't want to get into a situation where your dip belt breaks mid-set and you get a potential injury. As for the chain, I think in this particular context, using the chain is completely fine. The chain that comes with this dip belt can be a bit heavy, but for any athlete who lacks the funds to invest in weight plates of many different increments, the actual weight of the chain will not be much of a factor. If you really wanted to, you could go for a daisy chain, which I've been really liking so far. It's basically a rope with loops in increments so you can adjust how high the weights are. The most expensive part of any home gym are the weights. That's why in this list, I've opted to use kettlebells, 16, 24, and 32 kilos. So for a total price of $246, these kettlebells can go all the way up to 72 kilos in weight which if you're creative and smart enough, can be used to progress very far. Obviously, weight progressions won't be possible with this equipment, which is why rep progressions will become the main form of progression. I think if you wanted to do 1RM training, but you have this kind of setup, being able to add reps to a specific weight is a great way to increase your 1RM. And if you look at the best endurance street lifters, they found plenty of success with doing high volume style training and have successfully potentiated it into a competitive 1RM. I find that lots of reps at specific weights can be a good precursor to a heavy one rep max. So you're definitely getting stronger in the street lifting movements by increasing reps. With these specific weights, you also have access to the most commonly used weights in multi-lift competitions being 32 kilos for pull-ups and 48 kilos for dips. So you can definitely replicate what the weight will be like in competition if you ever plan to compete. Also, because this budget includes kettlebells, you can do a variety of one-legged exercises and hip hinge work to tackle the lower body. Kettlebells in general are extremely diverse. And if you're looking for a versatile workout beyond the street lifting movements, you can perform farmer's walks, kettlebell swings, goblet squats, and many more. You can even perform pistol squats and get really good at those. But to my knowledge, there hasn't been a pistol squat competition in a while, but I think the fact that you still have some accessibility to one-legged training with those kettlebells is still a pretty good feature of this budget setup. Anyway, that was all I had for this video. If you guys have any other ideas as to how to make a proper street lifting home gym on a budget, leave your comment down below. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you all 
in the next one.